Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 243. 243. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. We're heading towards the end of Halloween quickly, and the holiday season is uh, is pretty close at this point. So there are special offers for select nights in December and then early into 2018. Check with MEI Mouse Fan Travel for your trips. And also cruises. Yes, uh, the Maritime Cruises are coming up for the Disney Cruise Line. I'm assuming that's what they're still called. That's right, that's and right. And we did that before. That was a lot of fun. That means we're due. Yes, uh, we've been cruising Carnival a lot. Not uh, not Disney Cruise Line, I think, in about a year and a half. Plus, they have just had the very first Marvel Day at Sea, which looks uh, quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's always something going on. So check with MEI Mouse Fan Travel. They don't just do Disney either. They can uh, book almost anything for you. Absolutely. Check them out. So we're first going to head to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We were um, heading to uh, what used to be One Man's Dream, but now is called Walt Disney Presents. And you can see coming soon to Disney's Hollywood Studios, although... Yeah, we had a guest walk by and they're like, oh, coming soon, meet Star-Lord and uh, Groot. And they'd be, oh, I would wait in a long <laughs> line for that. And but I, they're there. I tried to run up and find them to tell them it's, it is now you can do that. But uh, I was too late. So it's the Toy Story uh, Land model, which is really the main reason we were coming here. Mm -hmm. I had seen it on October 1st, um, the day of the big Epcot. I walked over because I wanted to kind of check some new stuff out. Um, But this is really a fantastic model. Um, the Star Wars one we're going to look at as well, but this one is actually the, a full model. I am actually very excited about the Alien Swirling Saucers because I'm a big fan of Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, especially the uh, Halloween edition. So I am, And there's one of the ride cars, too. It looks very much like a Mater vehicle, doesn't it? Well, it's supposed to be like... It's the, like, same, it's the same ride, right. yeah. I, I don't know that they'll do a Halloween version, but, uh, but I do really enjoy Mater's Junkyard Jamboree over at um, Disney California Adventure. It's such a simple ride, and hopefully it'll still have its charm without Mater. So uh, we'll, well see. Well, everybody likes the aliens, too. So Toy Story Land is scheduled to open. They call it summer 2018. They haven't given a date. If it if it's similar to Pandora this year, it would be nice if they opened in May with soft openings mm-hmm. before that. I mean, they all were, already have Slinky Dog on the track, and I think he's being tested, and... And all that. So hopefully it will be sooner than later. Um, And it will have two new attractions. We have the Slinky Dog Dash and then the Alien Swirling Saucers, which is what we had just looked at. Right. And here is the uh, Slinky Dog Dash coaster, the model of the uh, coaster train, which is very cute. Like Slinky Dog himself, you were riding in Slinky Dog. Well, Slinky Dog Dash is going to be a family coaster, although it looks pretty big. Like at least on here, it, it looks, looks huge. It looks pretty big. And it goes under the bridge to this whole other side to track it. I mean, it, it definitely looks like a uh, lengthy coaster. Plus, um, they'll have some dining and other things to do as well here. Character meet and greets. Here is uh, Slinky Dog. We've seen Slinky Dog as an attraction over at uh, Disneyland Paris as well. Right, and that you also ride in Slinky Dog, but you just go around and around in a circle. Like so. in that's like at the state fair type yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. So I think this one will be probably a little bit more fun. Although I don't mind that one either. So um, Imagineer Kathy Magnum had said that they want people to feel like they stepped in the. Uh, set into the set of their favorite film, just like at Radiator Springs uh, at Disney California Adventure. So hopefully that's, uh, I mean, it looks very involved. Right, and the cast member kept emphasizing that we're going to be shrunk down to the size of the toy. So very much like, uh, what was Bugs the- Land. The Bugs Land, exactly. And also the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, movie set adventure, which is like the playground. And the Honey, I Shrunk the, the audience there too. So yes, lots, lots of, of shrinking. shrinking. <laughs> yes, here's a close up of the Slinky Dog coaster, by the way. Right, um, that's a maquette of the Slinky Dog. That is not the actual yes. <laughs> version. I think our viewers can figure that out. <laughs> so also, Toy Story Mania recently had a third uh, track installed, which has made it much easier to even get on the attraction, you know, without having to wait hours. Um, so that is part of part of this. And this is a little a dining area. We don't know a lot about it yet. Hopefully more will be announced soon. And also I was told there'll be a lot more of the meet and greets in the new land. So, you know, we love the meet and greets. We'll see what happens with that. Here you see uh, a lot of more props, the little monkeys there. Right. Yeah, the barrel full of monkeys. So Really a lot of, um, you know, your childhood toys, the Tinker Toys, and and it will be interesting, I guess, just bigger than life it will seem, I'm, assu- I'm assuming. I mean, we haven't walked there yet, so we don't know what it quite what it will look like, and you can see 
the Pixar ball there as well. Not a very hidden Pixar ball, that's for sure. It's a big one. That's bigger than almost <laughs> everything there. So they're saying summer. Come back next summer, they're telling the guests. So hopefully, if that's true, then we'll have soft opening uh, a little earlier, maybe uh, June, May, June, something like that. Well, I mean, this year, Pandora opened in May, and the soft opening started probably around April. So hopefully, we'll see something like that. Here is a little tiny bit of a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. They were saying that... Once Toy Story Land opens, they're going to use that space to put more of the model up for uh, Star Wars. Well, we've seen the Galaxy's Edge model, the full one, um, over at the D23 Expo. The California version. Right. So it'll be interesting to see more of that uh, eventually show up. So now Mickey and Minnie's Runaway uh, rail, Railway? Railway. Railway. Mickey and Runaway, Minnie's Railway. Runaway Railway. This Tongue is twister. Yes, the Great Movie Ride recently closed a couple months ago or so now. I can't believe how long ago. So this is what's going to be going into uh, into there. Guests will step through the movie screen inspired by Mickey Shorts on the Disney Channel. Um, so this is like the first Mickey ride ever, which seems kind of hard to believe. Uh, no date has been given for it. I don't even know if we have a year for it yet. That's interesting, whatever that model was that we just saw. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that cars only hold two well you know what i would i do not mind if it's just two although you're not going to push very many guests through so we'll see maybe it'll be big ride cars just like i have no idea i have no idea <laughs> so um but they are also calling it two and a half d no glasses required though so it sounds like it'll be kind of like an almost 3d effect is w the way they made that sound and here's one last look at the uh, concept art for mickey and minnie's Runaway Railway. So now, of course, we're going to take a little tour of Grand Avenue. And I was so looking forward to this. Uh, you know, New York Street lives on, but now it is in uh, California. Well, it's in... Uh, Themed as California. Los Angeles. Correct. So it's supposed to be downtown Los Angeles. We're on Grand Avenue. Even the Muppets Courtyard is no longer the Muppets Courtyard, which I, for some reason I hadn't realized it is now considered Grand Park. So you have Grand Park, Grand Avenue... Um, this is just a little bit of the streets of America. It would look even better with Christmas lights. I keep hoping there'll be Christmas lights on here. And you can see, I believe that's the entrance to Star Wars land over here. So now Los Angeles will take you straight into Star Wars in a couple of years. <laughs> so what else do we know about Grand Avenue? So Grand Avenue is inspired by the revitalization and vibrant culture of uh present day LA. I mean, there it really is a Grand Avenue. I actually don't know if I've been on Grand Avenue, so I don't know exactly how much this would remind me of it if I was there. We will have to go there. Yes. And then uh, there's also a Grand Arts Theater, which is, it was the Muppets Theater. Now it's Grand Arts Theater. I don't know how much Muppets are going to be seeing in the coming years, if that, if this is going to change. You know, how does Miss Piggy Fountain, you know, translate into modern day LA? I have no idea. Or Pizza Rizzo. So, um, oh, and here's the entrance. I believe this is the entrance here to Star Wars Land coming Open up. Open 2019, it says. Actual date now yes. on the on the poster. So just a couple of years away, Disneyland will be first, though. So Grand Avenue also is where uh, vintage office buildings and warehouses are being converted to exciting new uses. So I don't know which part is the exciting part. I do. You know what the exciting part <laughs> no, is? The, the baseline, baseline tap, tap house. house. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll be going there very soon. We're just panning along. I, I really enjoyed seeing all this uh, looking better than ever. Well, it, you know what? It looks really nice. I'm glad to see some of the Streets of America still there. Also, there's still more coming. I believe a music shop where you'll hear actually hear music coming out of it is what we were told. Um, so, yeah, the Baseline Tab House we're going to be uh, checking out in just a minute, too. But here is, we're looking more at the Star Tours area. I don't know what's going to happen with Star Tours, either. Well, I was just showing the old entranceway that you used to take to get to the Muppets Courtyard is no longer. It is now behind wall. So, and right here where the trees are, that's where the uh, skyscrapers at the end of New York Street was, just to give you a perspective. And now we're looking over there at uh, the Baseline tap house right and this is uh, the newest dining location i, I don't want to say dining there's only a few little snack drinking items. location it's, it's more, more of a the bar drinking. yes it's definitely more of a bar yes so really even the drinks are fairly limited but it what we had was really good plus they have th i believe three items on the menu as far as food the pretzel which we did try 
and then um, the charcuterie, the and then uh, the almonds. And this you're looking at here are some uh, Disneyland references. If you look up around the uh, decor of the Baseline Tap House, you'll see a lot of references to Disneyland. There was a shirt uh, a couple of years ago for sale, a uh, friendlyable shirt. You probably that, got that. Uh, I own, yes. And that was a vintage Disneyland. So it's nice to see all the Disneyland references. I think we're going to see a castle soon. And of course, you're seeing all this Disneyland stuff because you're in California. Plus uh, the Baseline Tap House takes over where the writer stop was. I'm sure uh, a lot of you remember the writer stop. Ellen's had... by the book. Remember the yes, Ellen's by the book Yes, back then as well. And uh, Carrot Cake Cookies mm. were over at the writer stop. So it would be nice to see them, you know, come here. And there's at least one reference also to the, uh, the Ellen's shop uh, inside of the Baseline Tap House. So now here we're looking at the menu, the beer menu here. And as you mentioned, it's not a huge menu, but it's all California. So uh, if you're looking at just California beers and wines and everything, there is quite a, a selection. And also they have mixed drinks, which you tried. And I think you had the California Sunset. Yes, and that was actually a, a very nice drink and we'll show that. But you can see just really a few small plates. I hope eventually they do have a kitchen. So I'm Not much though. They said it's a very small, a small kitchen. kitchen. So there really is limited room for them to prepare items. It would be nice. You know what? I would love to see sliders or something here. Just mm -hmm. like actual small plate food items as opposed to just snacks. But here is for only ten fifty, which to me is not a bad price. It's a great. I think it's a great deal. You're getting a total of uh, 20 ounces, 5 ounce uh, drafts there. Right. Just, you know, a number of different uh, California beers. And uh, I thought it was not a bad a bad price. And then you have the pretzel here, which hot, still hot. Yeah, well, for I think it was like ten dollars. So it, it better hopefully, be. better be. <laughs> hopefully it's hot. And uh, of course, it comes with the sides, including I believe there was like beer cheese. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. Didn't eat the side parts the the cheese so here we are there is the golden road 329 that is a uh, lager you're looking at a heffenweizen there also golden road green flash which is a passion fruit um wheat beer and then the last one was a uh, Stone Delicious, it was an IPA. Not a huge selection, but everything I had was really good. So uh, I can't wait to get back and try all the others that uh, were sold out when we were there. <laughs> and so now we are at Echo Lake. Uh, Echo Lake's been drained for at least a number of weeks now. I believe the only thing happening here really is like painting and landscaping. Um, and such like that, nothing nothing too major. What about the Secret World of Color Star Wars edition that we're yeah. not supposed to talk about? <laughs> no, we're just kidding. It's just having a nice uh, refurb. But it's always interesting to me to uh, see what all this stuff looks like when the water is drained. You can see there's actual grass there, but underneath is uh, just scaffolding and whatever's holding up Gertie there, the dinosaur. So it's quite interesting. And it looks like she's got a little paint. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, hopefully it will look really good soon. And uh, Men and Bills is being, re I believe, getting some pain. And speaking of uh, Men and Bills, there it is. And it is still open, by the way. So you can still dine there just like normal. I think Dinosaur Gertie's might be open as well, uh, I, from what I remember. So anyway, we're going to be heading on to Sunset. And just to mention, and we're not talking about it today, but they're going to have all kinds of Christmas here. Um, there will be projections right there on the Hollywood Tower. I can't wait for that. It will be interesting to see how they how they do that. So anyway, we're heading now to the uh, the Walt Disney World Dolphin. The Swan and Dolphin recently underwent a hundred and forty million dollar uh, project to renovate, kind of revitalize. Yes everything so here is the new lobby of the dolphin i don't know if you remember but it was like a circus tent up there before it looks much nicer you've got a new fountain now there won't be the big christmas tree here i don't know what they're going to do yet um but this is really gorgeous and they have this beautiful chandelier that has like ten thousand crystals in it it reminds me of like if you go on spaceship earth and you see all those it, you look up and it looks like crystals on your way down that's what it reminds me of Oh boy, and here is the signature smoke box drink. So I have never seen anything like this before. It is the uh, called the Smoke and Roses. It's a Four Roses small batch bourbon, and then it's in a signature smoke box. And it really was just the presentation was incredible. Quite the it. production, as you can see. Not easy to get the shot also, by the way. And I thought Behind it was... Behind the scenes action. <laughs> I thought it was tasty too, but I, I mean, really, it's about the presentation, a lot of that. And here is the lobby. The lobby, I believe, is doubled in, in size as far as seating. Definitely a lot more, you know, nice areas for guests. And there's this uh, new, they call it a dining venue called 
uh, fuel. And it's sort of like, I don't want to say it's, it's like a quick service, but it also is like a store. It's hard to really just pin it down exactly what it is. Right. You can get supplies. You can get drinks. If you want just wine, you want a six pack of beer, you want a sandwich, if you want a dessert. It's really, it really caters to a lot of, uh, a, a lot of different needs. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of different wines, a lot of different beers. There's uh, frozen yogurt. But like when you get a sandwich, our sandwich was very good, but the, the pastries are by uh, Chef Brandlard and he is incredible as far as the different desserts. He has won, I mean, he's won awards, so. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you that what we had, the, that was the absolute. Uh, the cupcake. Best, the cupcake was phenomenal. We and we'll a, talk about that very soon. Okay, and but they have a number of different uh, pastry items and, and just, I mean, it's very high quality. And then they have coffee. It's like a coffee shop, too. And a chocolate sculpture there, very much like the uh, sculptures you see of Santa Claus made out of chocolate every mm -hmm. year. So this really was a very much needed location as far as just being able to grab a quick bite um, in the Swan and Dolphin. And Finn and Feathers Pale Ale. I have a six pack in the refrigerator right now. I know. It, that was uh, that was very nice. I know how much you like the Finn and Feathers. Um, so here is the, here are the sandwiches. You can get cold, hot sandwiches. They also have, um, uh, salads and we're probably going to see those as well. And, uh, so I just thought the, the amount of items, there's actually quite a bit to choose from. Well, they make the sandwiches fresh for mm -hmm. you. It's not like it's just grab and go. Although I think they do have some grab and go mm -hmm. as well. And there is our sandwich, which was quite good. Plenty to feed the both of us. Yes. Well, I mean, we split a beef sandwich. We were heading over to the Baseline Tap House at that time. And then uh, I purchased this. This was the uh, Strawberry Shortcake Cupcake with the ears on it. So I thought that was very cool. It's sort of like Minnie Mouse. At least it's dressed like Minnie Mouse. But inside, it's tremendous. There's actual strawberries in there, all sorts of different items. It was quite uh, interesting. Well, it's it, it's almost like art when you open it. And yeah. I thought that was very cool. But check out these desserts. I mean, it's like going, like if you ever go to the Swan and Dolphin Food and Wine Classic or any of the the nice restaurants here at the, the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, you can find terrific, uh, terrific desserts like that. So now it's time to head over to Disneyland Paris for the Disney Fan Days inaugural party. We were part of this. I mean, Jeff and I weren't able to go personally, but uh, but Axel uh, from the Curious Axel YouTube channel uh, was able to cover it for us and of course for himself as well. So you can even find more on uh, the Disney Fan Days at his at his uh, YouTube at channel. Curious Axel. We will link to that. We will link to uh, our video that he did for us. And here is Curious Axel himself to tell us all about this event that I know we're going to want to go to. So anyway, here he is. Well, hi, everybody. So uh, I had the uh, pleasure of representing Mouse Taps on the presentation of the Fan Days event. And we were greeted uh, by this whole bunch of uh, characters that was really nice to start an amazing evening. They uh, had a dinner prepared for us in Studio One, that's in the Walt Disney Studios. Uh, we had some amazing food, so the whole buffet, everything was really done very nice. Also the desserts, where do I start? Now, the Fan Days event uh, that is going to happen on the first weekend of June was presented during this uh, evening. Now, a few things uh, await us during that first weekend of June. First of all uh, is Dance Your DuckTales Parade. So we are going to see all the characters of Duckburgs. Uh, that's going to be amazing. Now, another thing is the Max Live, the getting goofy with it. It's going to be a, a dance party, which is going to be awesome. And, of course, we have all those Disney characters. Now, during that weekend, we are going to see more than 50 characters. Some rare, some unseen characters. Now, all the usual characters, well... All the Fab Five, they have all new costumes. So that was amazing to see uh, Donald, uh, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto, uh, Mickey and Minnie, Duffy and Shelly Mae. But also a few characters that we don't see a lot in the Paris parks, uh, which are, of course, the Zootopia characters, Nick and Judy. We have uh, Vault. Uh, we have Big Hero 6, which is 
such an amazing thing because we never had a hero in the park or even yokai and i think that yokai did the professor callahan was uh, its first time ever as a character inside the disney park if i'm not mistaken so we had an amazing night we do not have any um, idea of price or what everything uh, is gonna be so we still have to wait some news we got this first uh, big presentation it was actually a big teaser along the night uh, but we have to wait to get more information but already put the first weekend of june in your calendar because that's gonna be an amazing weekend so that's just what we need another trip to disneyland paris in june i i cannot wait and as he mentioned, there will be at least like 50 characters. Over it sounds like, 50. Right. And a lot of them, if not all of them that you can meet. And then, you know, the DuckTales parade and everything. It it's just worth sounds... it just for the DuckTales parade, yes. I think. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you to Axel for covering that uh, for us. And again, I mean, check out his own uh, YouTube channel as well. He has so many videos of Disneyland Paris. And he says he will be covering the Halloween soiree for us at uh, Disneyland Paris, which I cannot wait to see. And that's in a couple weeks. I and guess that will be similar to last year, but it looked like a great time last year. Um, I'm just, uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying all this great Disneyland Paris coverage because I wish I was there, like, right now for Halloween. Oh, we always <laughs> wish we were there. I know. I love Disneyland Paris. And another thing we love is Mission Breakout. Monsters in the Dark. This is at Disneyland, uh, Disney California Adventure. And uh, we're going to be talking about that next. This is our Halloween segment for the week. So, um, Monsters After Dark, the, the really interesting thing, and I don't remember this happening with any other attraction, is that uh, this is where the Tower of Terror was. Um, it is Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout during the day, but once it comes to about six o'clock at night, it becomes Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout monsters after dark. Right. For Halloween season only. Through October it, 31st. That's right. So it's a limited time magic thing. So, I mean, it's totally different. Uh, I guess the mission breakout's been successful, but now... Uh, Rocket has to come get Baby Groot because Baby Groot has you know, somehow let out the monsters. So and uh, he's still here. He he, he did not there. escape. So Rocket has to come get him. So uh, this is to me. I think I almost enjoy this version even better than the daytime version. But the cool thing is you can do both in a day. Absolutely, absolutely. And what is interesting here is Rocket has the great idea to use us, to use the guests as a way to uh, distract the monsters or actually uh, kind of be bait for the monsters. <laughs> and I think we're gonna be seeing a little of that uh, coming up soon too. So there's like a new soundtrack, um, it's just, Monsters, monsters, monsters after Yes, dark. that's that's pretty much how it goes. I'm not sure there's much more words to it than that. But if you haven't been to, and, and I just want to mention, Disneyland Paris is probably getting Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It's been rumored for a long time. I don't think it's like been announced or anything. But we're looking, I think, at a lot of Marvel for Disneyland Paris' uh, Studios Park at this point. I also want to mention even the cast member outfits change for this uh, event. Mm -hmm. They have blood spattered vests on. I didn't even notice, yes. I didn't notice oh, yeah. that. So it is quite scary at but, night. But you know, it, it actually, I didn't think, it, I don't think this is scary. Like kids can go on it. I didn't see any kids, you know, nervous about it. Somebody, I did see one guest, a female adult guest who was very nervous and she thought it was going to be monsters in the dark. And I said, no, <laughs> no, you know, there is darkness, but a lot of it is screens. You know, it's not like you're in the dark the whole time. So once I told her it was monsters after dark instead of monsters in the dark, it seemed to make her feel a lot better. <laughs> well, all I can tell you is we enjoyed this so much that we went on it every single day that we could, every day that we were at once in the park. We were able to do it twice because of some uh, a little bit of a mess up with the Max Pass. Right, and you just saw a little cameo by Mr. Stan Lee there. Everyone mm -hmm. knows who that is. So anyway, it's so good that I, I just I wish I could still go on it every single day. I you know what I would still be riding it. it if you can get to Disneyland and Disney California Adventure for Halloween, this is something you really would want to do. If if you don't mind attractions, like if you can do Tower of Terror, right. you can do Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a similar type of attraction, although this is 
this moves a lot more than Tower of Terror does. And you know, this is not the first time that Disneyland has had holiday versions of the attractions. Of course, we have Haunted Mansion Holiday, which we love, and we also went on that many, many times during our trip. Since 2001. They've exactly. been doing that for almost 20 years now. And Space Mountain Ghost Galaxy. Yes, and that I, I think they need to to up that one a little bit. I thought, that. but you also have Mater, uh, Mater's Junkyard ha, Graveyard Jamboree, Jamboree, and then also Luigi's has been rethemed for the holiday. So you have like four or five attractions now. Five, I think, five attractions now rethemed for Halloween, which is very cool. And the uh, the Jingle Cruise I hear in Disneyland will not be returning, although it looks like we will still be having a Jingle Cruise. At, uh, at Walt Disney World. Right, and, and we just know for this year it's not returning. They have not announced for next year yet. And you have Small World Holiday during the Christmas season. Right, plus they also still have the Haunted Mansion Holiday for Christmas too. But now, with this, I think we should have Christmas, Christmas, Christmas after dark. So what just do you think? so you know, he stole that from me. So <laughs> that's what, what I mean? said earlier. What do you mean? I made that up. You didn't so. come up with the song. No. Well, it's the same song as Monsters After Dark, but that I did say that. I would love a Christmas version somehow of this. I know it can be done. So I uh, have no idea, you know, what they would do. I'm assuming that it will not happen, but it's cool that they had a, a new Halloween version already. It'll make us uh, come out there if they yes. do it. So when the talk of um, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout got a little stronger uh, this week on, especially on Twitter, I for noticed Disneyland it. For Disneyland Paris. For Disneyland Paris, because in Walt Disney World, we're not, it doesn't look like we're going to get it. Um, you know, there was a lot of concern about it. But, you know, I think both of us can just say it, it's Worry really not. Yes. And uh, it's it's really a great, a, a great attraction and uh, it will be a lot of fun. And I know it's not as pretty on the outside, but it's a lot of fun on the inside. Yeah, they will not be disappointed if uh, if the Marvel Land thing actually happens. And I'm not even a big Guardians of the Galaxy fan. I love Baby Groot and that's about as far as it goes. So uh, if I can love it, anyone probably could love it. Right. Two big thumbs up for the regular Mission Breakout and Monsters After dark from us it's so much fun monsters after dark is my favorite attraction at disney at all i think and that is another show that's another show thanks to our sponsor mei travel and mouse fan travel if you want to go to disneyland paris if you want to go to walt disney world disneyland doesn't have to be disney either they can do just about anything and they specialize also in cruises i think they just got off a royal caribbean cruise recently as well every week they're always doing something I know exciting that, i think they're I doing jealous i think they're doing more adventures by disney they just went to asia so i mean if you're wanting to do adventures by disney they they know all about it because they're doing this like they're traveling all the time so um they can answer all kinds of questions about it so anyway we'll have much more goodness next week i'll be going to the magic kingdom early in the week to see what's new over there we'll have much more of uh Halloween, another segment from uh, Halloween at Disneyland. So uh, much good doings. Yeah, there's a lot coming up, and uh, we're going to be doing a little more Halloween over the next couple of weeks. And then we're going into Christmas. Uh, just a few more weeks until Mickey's very merry Christmas party. Oh <laughs> debuts. boy! Don't even. Don't Are even... you ready for it? I Are don't you know. Ready? Are you ready? I'm actually ready for for. I feel like. Halloween's already done. It's been done. Yeah, but I mean, it's not even Halloween Day yet. We're still like two weeks from Halloween Day or more. I'm ready for Flower weeks. and Garden. It feels almost ready I'm for I'm not spring. quite ready for that. I'm ready for Christmas, though. Anyway, thanks again for listening. Have a great week, and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.